There's a few things that I want to show you about working with the exercise in the first chapter, um, mostly related to uh, color and applying color to shapes, um, and then also a couple of quick ways to create new shapes and move shapes around, um, and then finally uh, a couple of details about saving. So when you're finished with the exercise, you might have something that looks sort of like this. I'm going to show you my layers. Um, I'm in essentials mode, so uh, you can you know, change your mode here in Illustrator. Um, and then I'm also going to just go under Window and pull open my layers. I almost always work with my layers open. And when I created this um, exercise, what I did was I put the actual reference on a background layer. So I, I did File Place, and I placed, uh, which is grayed out now, but and I placed my uh, picture that I got from the internet. Um, and then I locked that. So right here there's an, a lock icon. It's, I think this is kind of bad design because you don't see it unless you know where it is. But basically right next to the eyeball on the layer panel you can, you can check that box and then that will lock the layer. Locking this layer is really helpful because then if you go to move something right on top of it you won't move that layer around. In fact I can't, once the layer is locked I can't do anything. Um, but I could create a new layer and on that new layer I then could draw a shape and when I go to move that shape around I don't have to worry about accidentally picking up that back layer. So um, you can see with my in my layer panel that I have uh, the background layer and then I have a second layer and on that layer I have all of my paths, um, all of my shapes. For each shape um, you could either create a shape, so there's a couple of ways of going about this. You could just let me hide the top layer and we'll just play with this. You could just make a shape and then with your selection tool, um, if you put your cursor sort of towards the outer corner, you could click and drag to rotate. So you might do something like that. Um, then you can modify your shape by pulling or pushing on those anchor points. Um, and then you're going to deal with color. So once you've got your shape created, um, then you might try to apply a color. So, in terms of color, there's a bunch of ways to approach this. I want to show you all the different ways because I think it's important to know how to how to do this effectively and, and also one way is going to feel the most comfortable for you. So, um, let me use my hand tool here and just move this whole artboard up a little bit. By the way, I could also access that hand tool from any of the tools with the space bar. So, I usually use the space bar to move the artboard around in my view. So one way I could add uh, a different color to this shape is I could double click on the fill, uh, the fill color chip, which is here at the bottom of the tool panel. So if I double click there, then I see the color picker. And the color picker is organized over here on a spectrum. And if I go to whatever color I want within the spectrum, um, then I'm going to have the most intense uh, or highly chromatic version of that color here in the top left corner. And, um, and then that value fades out to white as I move to the left. And as I move down, that value gets darker. So in the very bottom right corner, I'm going to have black. And in the very top left corner, white. And then all the different variations on this hue that I've selected. Um, and that applies to whatever hue you pick, right? So each of these hues, blue, green, violet, magenta, uh, pink and red and so forth. Um, I'm still going to always have the, the most intense version of the color here fading down to black and fading uh, out to white on the side. So one way to pick a color is to use the color picker. Um, you know, choose your hue and then go find a value. So that I could do that and press OK and then that would change the color of my, of my um, rectangle. Another way to work with color is to use the color panel, which is stored over here in this, in this um, side panel that comes up with the essentials mode. Um, and this color panel, um, I think this is, um, a, well, this can be a slightly more accurate way of working only because um, it sort of forces you to look at the values ascribed to each of your um, color channels. And you can actually see that also in the color picker, but it's, it's also easy to miss when you're in the color picker because you're so um, drawn to those bright colors. Um, here, let me move this out of the way so we can see this a little more easily. Here in the color uh, panel, I can work in 
different color modes. So I could work in RGB mode, HSB, CMYK, or web safe RGB. Um, for what you'll be doing in the class and probably for any printer that you will use, uh, just a you know home printer if you're going to use that, we're actually not even printing because our class is, is online, but um, you will probably for the most part be working in RGB color mode, which um, which is the color mode that is um, most widely used on computer monitors and, and different types of screens. Um, but you may, you know, you may end up working, uh, if you're going to use a more high-end printer, you may have to work in CMYK color mode. So it's good for you to see here how you can change the color mode of, of that color panel. The one thing that's kind of nice about CMYK color mode is that the, the channels are cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. And so if you need a true black, the easiest way to get there is to slide the black slider all the way to 100% and to slide everything else down to zero. Um, you also can uh, work in percentages with other colors and so a lot of times, uh, you know, this is maybe a hypothetical, but let's say you're working for a client that always uses 20% cyan as their, you know, as their color for their logo or um, different materials. So you have an easy way to quickly get to 20% cyan. Um, so I like this kind of feature of uh, the CMYK uh, color panel. You may also work in RGB. RGB is also going to give you, it's not specifically in percentages, but basically if you slide the sliders all the way to the right and each value is at the top end, 255, 255, 255, that will give you white. And if you slide them all the way down to the left, 000, 000 is going to give you black. Um, and so, and I don't have my, <laughs> I don't have my, uh, shape selected. Let me select my shape and make that change again so we can see it happening. Um, so, um, you know, this also has its, its way of um, measuring color. Um, so you could pick a very specific amount of red um, and that would, for instance, you know, not have any green or blue mixed in with it. One more possibility is uh, you may want to you know, in, in some ways for this exercise it may be easiest to draw that shape and then use the eyedropper tool. So the eyedropper tool is here in your panel and with the shape selected if I use the eyedropper tool I can pick up a color from the painting or from the photograph that's on the layer beneath uh, the layer that I'm working on. So you could, it's not, I mean I want to say this is kind of like cheating, it's not cheating, it's actually more accurate um, and it's a nice way to know how to work. Um, it sort of takes the guesswork out of the equation for you in terms of trying to look and see and, and perceive those colors and match them, but, um, but it's, it's a good tool to know how to use. So that's another way to go. So once I would have one shape, if I were working on this project, I would then basically just use my selection tool for the rest of the process. With my selection tool, I'm on a Mac, so I'm going to hold the Option key. Notice that my selection tool becomes kind of a double arrow. If you're on a PC, you would press the Alt key. Right, so every time on, on my Mac I say Option, if you're on a PC, you'll do Alt. So with the Option key, I can click and drag, and that will make a copy. And then I'll let go of my Option key, and I will modify this shape. Nudge it into place, maybe rotate it. move it out of the way a little bit, go get that eyedropper tool, pick up another color, and then put it back into place. So that's how I would, I would do that over and over again to fill the whole frame. Um, option drag to make my next one, use the selection tool to rotate, change the dimensions, use the eyedropper to pick up your color, and so forth. At some point you may need to move shapes behind other shapes, um, and so the easiest demonstration of that would be, let's say when you're done with the whole thing, you want maybe a color to fill the entire background. So there is no fill background in Illustrator. Um, so what you would have to do is make one big shape that covers the whole screen. I'm going to use the eyedropper and pick up one of these dark reds. And right now that big shape is on top of um, everything basically. I want to make sure it hits the edges. And then I'll use object arrange and I'll use object arrange. Now send backward will only send the shape back 
one level. And actually, before I do that, let's look inside this layer that I have. So you can see this is on the very top of the stacking order of all of the paths. So if I choose Arrange Send Backward, that top path only moves back one step. I actually want to do Arrange Send to Back, which will move it all the way to the back. And you can also just pick these up and move them around, right? So it, you don't have to use that object uh, menu. I think it's easiest. In fact, what I usually do, um, this is one of the things that I, that I feel at myself doing very frequently. And so I know the key commands for this. Um, so right now I'm pressing Command Open Bracket, which will move the, the path up one level at a time, or Command Close Bracket, which will move the path back one level at a time. Command Shift Open Bracket will move it all the way up, and Command Shift Close Bracket will move it all the way down. Um, and those commands are also kind of printed for you here. On your PC, you'll use the Control key rather than the Command key, but you'll also use the bracket. Okay, once you're finished, you're going to just choose File Save As. And, um, you know, if I were in the lab, I would probably just save to the desktop as, as chapter1.ai and um, then put this on my jump drive if I were a student. Um, on your home computer, you may uh, have a different place where you're saving all of your work files. Um, if you don't already, you might want to make a folder, uh, exercise files or work files. Make sure that you follow naming conventions. So I should not see a capital C there. I should not see a space here. I should not see like extra, hooray, I can't believe I finished this markings. Um, so you want to be um, a little diligent about this. No spaces, no capital letters. If you feel the need to imply a space, a dash is okay. And then we should see that file extension. .ai should be there. So uh, there are different formats here. Uh, we will eventually save as a PDF as well, but for now, .ai is fine. And I'll press save, and I'll replace what I have going already. Now I want you to see in the Illustrator options. If you're working at home uh, on version CS6, you can basically just press OK right through the screen. You don't really have to worry about any of this. If you're working, let's say you're working in a lab that has CS6 installed, but at home you have CS5 or CS4, you will want to save for backwards compatibility. So if, if you are working in a place where you've made your project in CS6, but you'd like to open it elsewhere in a different version, save in that format. So use that pull-down menu, choose the right version for you, um, and then press OK. I'm on CS6, so I'm just going to press OK right through this. Now this is the native file, chapter1.ai. The native file is the file that is um, common to the application where the file was made. Right? So .ai is an Illustrator file. If I wanted to send this to someone for a preview, and I'm not totally certain that that someone has Illustrator installed on their machine, or even if I am, um, you know, I have Illustrator on my machine, but it takes a minute to load it up. And it's faster for me to preview a JPEG or a PDF than it is for me to go open an application that I may not have open in order to see somebody's work. So when you want to share your files, um, especially for feedback um, or review, it's better to save as um, a, a file that is used for that purpose. So I would rather have you save, you know, you always want to save your native file for yourself. That way you can edit the work later. But for sharing, I would, um, encourage you to save as a PDF, Adobe PDF. Just press save. There's a lot of possibilities in here. We'll talk about these possibilities later. For now, just press save PDF. Um, and that will give you a PDF. And if I look on my desktop, okay, I have my AI file and then I have my PDF file. And this would be the file that I would email or post to a discussion board or send to somebody. Okay, that should get you through the first, uh, or rather, the last exercise in Chapter 1 and the first exercise in uh, soft, one of the Creative Suite software packages. And I'm looking forward to seeing your work.